Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com and in this tutorial we're going to look at groups in regular expressions in Perl. And groups allow you to find out what actual particular bit of your text, your regular expression actually matched. So um, I've copied this file from the last tutorial and we're just going through um, a file, we're opening a file and reading it one line at a time and each time we set this variable dollar line equal to the line that we read from the file and I've got it in a while loop so it's reading one line at a time and dollar line is being set to each line of the file in turn and we're, we are matching dollar line with a regular expression and if it matches this expression we're printing it to the file now supposing we don't want to print the entire line to the file Supposing we just want to print the bit that the regular expression actually matches. And if we look at this regular expression here, what we've got are we've got a capital I and any character, even a space, and, an, and another single character that could be anything, and then an A, and then finally another character. So we've got here five characters, and we are saying that if this line happens to match these five characters anywhere within the line will print the whole line to a file but what you often want to do is you often just want to get the particular bit of the text that actually matched your regular expression so in this this case just five characters and you can do that with groups and the way that it works is first put round brackets around the bit of the regular expression that you want to capture I was just thinking actually, um, I'm not sure if groups is the standard terminology, maybe it is, maybe they're called capture groups or something like that, but certainly groups is um, a common expression for this. So um, put round brackets about the, around the bit of the expression that you want to capture, and you, you can have more than one set of round brackets in there, but in this case I just want to know what this bit of the expression, which is bas basically the whole thing, what it actually matches, so I put round brackets around it. And now you can um, refer to the stuff that was matched there by the, the special variable $1. So I write $1. And now let's run this. And the stuff we match is only going to be ever only ever going to be five characters. And in fact, because this is very hard to read, let's embed this $1 in another string. So I'm going to say two double quotes uh, either side of it. And the reason I want to do that is because I want to put a backslash n in here. Backslash n, you'll recall, is a new line. So now we're printing a string which consists of this variable, $1, and then a new line character. So we're going to see each of these matches on a separate line. Let's run that. So here we go. Here are the matches. And you can see we're matching stuff like if and, and I say without the D on the end of said and lots and lots of groups of five characters starting in I and with a A in the fourth place and the other characters can be anything. And you can have more pairs of round brackets within your regular expression. If you've got a longer regular expression then you can have more round brackets in there. And let's, let's take an example. Supposing you want to match five characters with these five, five characters that I've specified here and then you want to match any other three characters following that so that's dot 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 now if I run this this is going to be unchanged we're just saying match match this stuff and then match any other three characters after it and pretty much all of the original matches will have three characters following them I should think but now supposing we want to capture this second bit we can have more round brackets and we could even um, just put the round brackets around some part of this latter bit here it doesn't matter you can have pairs of round brackets anywhere within your regular expression they don't have to be next to each other but in this case um, well we've, we've got two pairs of round brackets how do we refer to the second pair well it's it's dollar two so I could write here let's say dollar two so now I'm outputting $1 and $2. And so we're matching, for example, I 
had that we matched by this bit and then space ju which is being matched by dollar two i know this looks a bit weird here um, because i'm writing dollar one and dollar two next to each other and i don't have to do that i could say something like this i could put first match colon and then let's put a semicolon and then second match so this is just normal english stuff that i'm typing and dollar one's going to be replaced by whatever this matched and dollar two is going to be replaced by whatever this matched so if i run this then we get this i could i could even put quotes in it if i want you can use single quotes within double quotes and you can use double quotes within single quotes so i could put here this just to make sure that I, I know exactly what's being matched I could put single quotes around these variables and notice this whole thing here this whole thing is enclosed in double quotes that's the whole point it's all one long string it's just that it's got some weird uh, kind of control characters and variables embedded within it and that's a really great thing in Perl that you can embed variables as well as control characters in strings so let's run this and there we're seeing what each bit matched and usually the second bit is matching some space but not always so here we've got three characters next to each other this all together would say say i babble i babble so the whole thing is matching i babble so that's it for this tutorial this is groups are extremely useful and um, you'll want to use them quite a lot so it's worth knowing this and I'll put this code on caveofprogramming.com and until next time, happy coding.